Hey everyone, Eric Stackelbeck here. Today on the newscast, get all the latest updates on the takeout of Iran's top nuclear scientist. The Iranian regime is breathing threats of retaliation against Israel, so what comes next? Plus, did another top Iranian official meet his demise over the weekend? Get all the breaking details coming up. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. The dramatic takeout of Iran's top nuclear scientist, the man who was considered the father of Iran's nuclear weapons program, continues to capture all of the headlines out of the Middle East. That game-changing event on Friday, November 27th will, I believe, have profound implications for the region. We're going to get into all the latest updates and what comes next in a minute, plus... A breaking news update, reportedly a top Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps official was killed over the weekend. Some conflicting reports there, but very interesting. Before we get into it, I just want to encourage you to subscribe to the Watchman News channel right here on YouTube and click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted. We are bringing you the kind of cutting edge, timely analysis that you just won't hear anywhere else, certainly not in the mainstream media. Hey, the MSM painted the death of Mohsen Fakhrizadeh last Friday as a loss of a scientist, a respected scientist who was the architect of a peaceful nuclear program. The truth could not be further from what was reported in the mainstream media, so let's get into it. But before we update you on Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, let's go with the breaking news aspect of today's newscast, the reported death of Muslim Shadan. That's the name of a top Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps official who was reportedly killed over the weekend. Now, as I mentioned at the top, there are conflicting reports. The Iranian regime, not always the most trustworthy source, is saying that this did not happen, that Shadan is still alive, but... Various Middle Eastern news outlets reported uh, yesterday, Monday, November 30th, and Sunday, November 29th, that Muslim Shadan, this top Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps official, was crossing in a vehicle from Iraq into Syria. And when he was crossing into Syria, the vehicle he was traveling in was destroyed by a drone strike. Now, reportedly, in that vehicle were also weapons that Shadan and his minions were transporting from Iraq into Syria. Now, again, uh, disputed reports. The Iranian regime is saying, no, this dot did not happen. Other outlets in the Middle East are saying, yes, it did indeed happen. Folks, if this did occur, it's another major blow to the Iranian regime, which has been reeling, really, since January 2020, the beginning of this year, when the arch-terrorist, Revolutionary Guards Corps official Qasem Soleimani was taken out in Iraq by a U.S. drone strike. Ever since, it's been hit after hit against the Iranian regime and its assets throughout the Middle East, in particular in Syria and on Iranian soil. The death of Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, Iran's top nuclear scientist, just late last week is another signal that the Iranian regime is not safe anywhere today, including on its own soil. So we will keep you updated on the possible takeout of Muslim Shadan. That's the name of this top Revolutionary Guards Corps official. Hopefully we'll get more details on that in the days to come and we will give you an update here, but that would have been yet another major blow to the regime coming just a day or two after the death of Mohsen Fakhrizadeh. So let's get into that. Again, this was the man who was considered the father of Iran's illicit nuclear weapons program, uh, traveling in a car last Friday, November 27th, uh, to the east of Tehran, the Iranian capital, in a resort town there called Absard, where a lot of Iranian officials apparently go to vacation and take time off, I suppose. He was traveling in a convoy, including some of his bodyguards. And now there are varying reports here, too, about how he was killed, but it seems to have been some combination of an explosion and gunfire that took him out. Now, the Iranians are saying it was a remote controlled attack, whatever that means. And then there are other sources saying there was a hit squad that pulled up next to this convoy and took Fakhrizadeh out. 
we may never get the full story, but the key takeaways here, folks, right now are number one, the Iranian regime obviously is furious over this and threatening retaliation and revenge. And number two, they are pointing the finger squarely at Israel. Now, Israel, 95% of the time, will not claim credit if they do carry out an attack such as this. Occasionally, they do. To send the message, especially when they hit Iranian assets and Hezbollah assets in Syria, Israel will say, we did this and it's a warning, back off Iran and get out of Syria. But when it comes to sabotage on Iranian soil, Israel is mum about that. They usually won't say anything. Israel has assets, intelligence assets, people working undercover inside Iran. And we've seen the fruits of that, right? Over the past several years, think back to May 2018, that blockbuster press conference when Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu revealed that the Israeli Mossad, the intelligence service, was able to get a haul of top secret Iranian nuclear documents out of Tehran and smuggle them back to Israel. That was pretty amazing, a pretty amazing exploit by the Mossad. So that was one indication of the reach Israel has inside Iran. And once again, uh, over the summer, we've talked about it many times here in the newscast. You can check it out in our archives. Hey, Iran's nuclear weapons facilities, their ballistic missile factories, were repeatedly the target of sabotage, explosions, some major damage was done to those facilities on Iranian soil, most spectacularly, I guess you would say, to that Natanz nuclear facility, which suffered a major explosion back in July. Again, no one claimed responsibility for that sabotage, just as no one has claimed responsibility for the death of, the death of Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, but in both cases, the Iranian regime is pointing the finger at Israel. And if this top Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps commander was killed over the weekend as well in a drone strike as he was crossing from Iraq into Syria, it's a pretty good bet that the Iranian regime may point the finger at Israel there as well. So what does this all mean? Folks, number one, very tough year for the Iranian regime, right? The year started off, think about this, the year started off January 3rd, 2020, with the death of Qasem Soleimani, and that cannot be understated, the magnitude of his death and the repercussions it had for the Iranian regime and their grand strategy across the region and really across the world. He was arguably the second most important man in all of Iran, and he was taken out at the very beginning of the year. So the Iranian regime lost their top terrorist. He was the architect, again, of that strategy to uh, set up bases and set up shop and support proxy forces in Yemen, Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, and beyond. Soleimani was also very involved in directing Iran's external terror operations around the world. He's gone. That's how the year started. Now, as the year draws to a close, the architect and the father of Iran's nuclear weapon strategy has also met his demise, Mohsen Fakhrizadeh. So again, a very tough year for the Iranian regime in between these two spectacular takeouts of top terrorists working for the Iranian regime. We've had just a steady, steady string of sabotage inside Iran against their nuclear facilities and missile factories. As I mentioned, also, Iran has been hit very, very hard inside Syria repeatedly by Israel. And lastly, we've had the Trump administration squeezing Iran with very tough economic sanctions. Iran is enriching uranium at just unheard of rates, a 12 times what is permitted under that nuclear deal that thankfully the United States pulled out of a few years back, but which Britain, France, Germany, China, and Russia are still clinging to. So Iran is in clear and brazen violation of the Iran nuclear deal. And perhaps Israel said they're reaching a threshold, a point of no return. Obviously, Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, again, is their point man on that program. 
So Israel, if Israel was behind this, we don't know. No one has claimed responsibility. But if Israel or some allies of Israel, perhaps inside Iran, remember, this regime has many enemies, including Iranians, uh, if they were behind this, they could say, hey, this is the time because Iran is much too close to getting the bomb. And we know from various uh, experts in uh, the atomic energy field that if Iran wants to break out within a few months, they have enough enriched uranium now to develop two nuclear bombs. With the death of Soleimani, back in January, the Iranian regime reacted by firing missiles at U.S. bases in Iraq. Now, there is a track record here. Back in May 2018, the same week as the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem opened, or a few days before that, uh, I was there the day after this when Iran fired over 30 missiles out of Syria into Israel. Thankfully, none of them struck their targets, and Israel responded with overwhelming force, taking out many Iranian targets inside Syria. Could we see some kind of retaliation in that vein, where Iran, out of Syria, of course, uh, fires missiles into Israel? One Iranian mouthpiece, one Iranian official publication, was calling for strikes against Haifa, the third largest city in Israel, uh, on Israel's northwest coast. Hey, in today's Middle East, folks, expect the unexpected. That's why the leader of Hezbollah right now, another aside to mention here, Sheikh Hassan Nasrallah is reportedly in hiding right now, once again, and moving from fortified underground bunker to fortified underground bunker. In terms of retaliation, again, could it be some kind of barrage of rockets or missiles out of Syria against Israeli targets? Could it be a strike or an attempted strike against Israeli or Jewish targets around the world? Could Iran act through proxy? God forbid is what I say to all three of those horrific possibilities. Let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem, pray for the nation of Israel, pray for every nation that is in the crosshairs of that Iranian regime. I think one thing is certain here, and this was irregardless of the death of Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, Iran was definitely on the path to increasing their nuclear, illicit nuclear activities. But the good news is, Fakhrizadeh is a very tough man to replace, almost impossible, according to some reports. The degree of expertise and know-how and vision he had when it came to Iran's nuclear program, again, much like Qasem Soleimani with Iran's regional strategy. So very tough to replace Fakhrizadeh. The regime is once again on its heels, and we like to see them on their heels because for about 40 years, they were on the ascendance and not suffering any consequences for their radical terrorist behavior across the world. There's a reason this regime is identified by the United States as the world's number one state sponsor of terrorism, and Mohsen Fakhrizadeh was a crucial component of that terror strategy for the Iranian regime. I'm sure we'll have many breaking updates for you right here on the newscast, so stay tuned and be sure to subscribe. Hey, before I close on a happier note, it's December 1st. It's the Christmas, Christmas season, of course, and we have a great offer for you. We are partnering here on the Watchman Newscast with a great company called Artsa to bring you the Artsa boxes. These are subscription-based boxes uh, from Israel, from the Holy Land, made by Israeli artisans and small businesses and entrepreneurs. This month's offer is a box of goods made in Bethlehem, the place of Christ's birth, just in time for Christmas, made in Bethlehem, Israel, by Israeli artisans. Hey, you are fulfilling the biblical mandate to bless Israel. That's number one. You're blessing the Israeli economy when you get an Arts of Box subscription. And number two, for the person in your life who's never been to the Holy Land, maybe been once or twice, and is dying to get back but just hasn't been able to, this is a taste of the Holy Land in your hands delivered to your doorstep. It's also a very unique Christmas gift and a conversation piece uh, at your Christmas get-together. So check it out. We've got a Watchman discount. Go to artsabox.com and use the discount code WATCHMAN18 to get 18% off your Arts of Box subscription straight from the Holy Land. It's a great offer, folks. We hope you take advantage of it. And we love partnering with Artsa. They've got a great team there doing some excellent, excellent work. Hey, 
Thanks for joining us today on the Watchman Newscast. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace.